so um, I'm not going to let just in a pre in another video I actually give you an example of this so here you have x y I can draw a table because x and y are discrete so there's some value for x x say x1 x2 y1 y2 then all these numbers here tell you about is basically the table for the probability joint probability mass function it's telling you probability of x1 and y1 is that probability x2 and y1 that probability okay and to get this what this is saying you're summing over all of uh, all of y so if we take x1 we're summing across all of y we're adding this number to this number that gives us a new x1 right if we're summing over each of these yi's over for a given xi so for a given x when x is x2 we sum across y's as well x2 and y1 plus x2 and y2 that gives me a new x2 and what we can say is that these two probabilities is the probability mass function the marginal probability mass function in other words if we look at this table uh, x1 x2 what's the probability well I've denoted by x1 star maybe I should put a p there instead anyway uh, yes let's put a p I don't like that doesn't change the story I'm just using different notation to show you that it's a probability we're dealing with uh, let's call this p let's call it p1 p2 right, these probabilities p1 p2 right and this is like of the form that you're used to when you kind of do an experiment say you are tossing a coin the coin has one of six outcomes and this will be one two three or five six and then you know the probability one six one six one six like that and then th so this is obtained from this okay and that's what this here shows you that yeah so I like this proof because it's building on and kind of um, consolidating the stuff we've learned in the past okay let's um, so I want to go back now to this double summation business I keep using big X big Y in this case it should be little x little y uh, actually I'll move that because I've already explained to you that for x it's summing from i y it's summing from j let's write that then and then we have x right this is what I want to show let's re-explain again but using um, giving you a bit more detail on this double summation so if you're happy with this then basically your proof is done you just go and redo it for the do it for the y as well then you've done here I'm just giving people who want to see it a bit more detail about this step in the proof okay double summation to make it easier we know about the a so let's just cancel both a's out divide a by both sides I'm just this is the bit let's just not distract this be too distracted by the a that's why I want to show I want to explain this in more detail recall I said in another video that double summation we can draw a table these are the counters i j x i and that's the thing I'm summing so we all can construct the table like this say i goes from 1 to was it m anyway it doesn't matter 1 1 1 1 and j goes from 1 to n okay we basically we need all combinations of this so when x is 1 j is 1 when x is 1 j is 2 when x is 1 j is 3 when x is 1 blah 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 all the way down to dot 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 all the way to n say observations then we're not done because then we say x is 2 and then repeat this j is 1 when x is 2 j is 2 dot 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 all the way again to n and we repeat so on and so on all the way until we get to the end where n takes the final value m and then j is 1, 2, da, 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 n. 
how many terms will I'm going to be adding together in total it should be if this is here I've said this is M this is N and they're both starting from 1 you should be adding M times N terms okay if you look at this this is N terms N terms N terms M times because you're going down I from 1 to M so in other words M times N number of terms but what are we adding together we're adding this thing and this is where I have to fill in this part of the table when i is 1, j is 1, well, then this is x1, because i is 1, times p, x1, j is 1, so y1. Next, x, i is still 1, but now j is 2, so it just changes this thing in here. y2. Get the idea? This one, 1 and n, x1, p, x1, y, n, right? What you're going to do here is you're going to add up all the terms in this column. And once you've done that, that gives you this thing. But let's look at the pattern. Can you see that this one has a common factor? It's of the form x1, bracket. Now, because I don't want to keep writing, that, that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's, so let me just try to, this is what you tend to do, math is shorten this expression. Let's just call this P, or the form PIJ. So in this case, it's P11, all right? That'll kind of shorten things. It's P11 plus, this one's going to P12 plus dot 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 it's a finite sum plus the last term in this in this sequence p one n p one n and I can see I'm going to get a similar thing for the second bunch except for I have x two but then this bit remains the same doesn't it if you look at what's going to happen except for you've got p two 1, P, 2, 2, and so on. Now this, if we look at in terms of summation, isn't this x1 sum over j of p um, let's now do, go back to this notation and you can see, see can compare it, x1 y j And now look at the comparison here, because what this is saying is set x i equal to number one first, and then let's change color, then multiply it by the sum of all this lot. Well, look, set x uh, i to one, so you have x one, then multiply it by all this lot, sum of this which is that. Then what do you do? You set i is equal to 2 and multiply it by this lot. So that gives me uh, this bit here. So this next bit here is x2 sum of j of p x2 yj and so on. Okay, so think it through. If uh, if you actually want to see an example, you can get your head around. You, you might just select m to be a number, say two, n to be a number, say three, and just write down the entire thing. Then you can see, do it, write it out in full, and then do it this way, and then you can see they match. Great. So what have we shown today? We've shown that for x, y being discrete that the expected value of a linear combination of x and y is equal to the sum of the expectations of the individual terms like so where yeah um, I said shown well I've shown this bit here but you're gonna you can show in an identical fashion just replacing x by y this term here so adding the two we get the result 
finish end of proof